Tonight in the trial of Oscar Pistorius, an expert's view of how Reva Steenkamp was killed. The first shot, hands is going up, a shot through the, the arm. And defiance when challenged with an accusation of bias. Never, ever was I asked to alter my report to suit the defense case. A reconstruction of the crime scene, complete with lasers to trace the possible trajectories of the bullets fired at Reva Steenkamp. Her boyfriend, Oscar Pistorius, admits firing four shots into the toilet cubicle. But the runner claims he was shooting at unidentified intruders. He insists he had no idea his girlfriend was behind the door. Establishing what happened that night, the speed and angles at which the bullets were fired is crucial. It will prove or disprove deliberate intent to kill. It will prove if Oscar Pistorius murdered his model girlfriend in a fit of rage, as the prosecution alleges, or if indeed Reva Steenkamp's death was a tragic mistake, as the defence maintains. To help establish the truth from a defence perspective, Ballistics expert Tom Woolmorans, a partially deaf Afrikaans-speaking ex-policeman. He attended the original crime scene in Oscar Pistorius' home. He prepared a preliminary report before submitting his final assessments. Prosecutor Harry Nell demanded to know and asked repeatedly where the first report was to establish if there were any discrepancies between that one and the final copy presented to the courts. Did you finish them with the report before the trial started? I've already answered the question, my dear. Did you? I'm asking it again. Did you finish the, the defence with the report before this trial started, a written report? There was a report that was uh, finished to them. Where is it? Where is the copy of that report? I haven't got it with me, my lady. Why don't you have it with you? Because this is my report, my lady. Why would you not want us to see the, your earlier report? My lady, as I said, the, the most of it was uh, uh, to uh, amend my my English. They, they, there's not really anything different from it. And then, as I can remember, one place I repeated myself, and it was was taken out because of the ongoing report. At some places, I repeated myself, so it was just taken out was Mr. Woolmorans, as the prosecution alleges, making his evidence fit the defence case. Did you change your report because of consultation? I've already said... That, you did. That, that, so you've consulted I've, I've, I've already said my, my English was... I, I was helped with my English, but never, ever, was I uh, asked to alter my report to suit the defence case. Mr. Woolmorans provided a rare moment of humour when he stood inside the reconstructed toilet. I'm in the toilet now. But he was here to make a very serious point. My lady, now she could laugh. Her arm comes up to... Normally you go for your face to, to protect your face. Going up collapsing, going down. Establishing the sequence and trajectory of bullets that killed Reva Steenkamp through a closed toilet door is critical to understanding the position of her body. Was she standing or was she cowering with her hands over her head when she was hit by the bullets as the police believe? Are you saying then she just collapsed downwards? That, that's how I understood both the pathologist's uh -huh. evidence. So oh, okay. I understood it that she collapsed. And I think one of the pathologists, maybe it was Professor Berta, she had, but most probably collapsed to the right side because the right hip was fractured and totally dis destroyed with that uh, black talon bullet. So I'm not a doctor, but it makes sense to me that she will collapse at that stage, the first shot, hands is going up, a shot through the, the arm, and that's the second shot. You see, on, on your version, if she collapsed there, 
the headwind could never have happened because she would have gone down and wouldn't have been able to get up. My lady knows that she could have fallen backwards okay. and in the process when she was falling back, the other two shots have, uh, could have been fired. Okay, let us just work on, on what you're saying. She's fallen backwards, the other two sh no. no, no. She's fallen backwards. Only one shot could still hit her because the other one missed. That caused E. Okay, so, so we have A in the hip, B in the shoulder. On your version, she collapsed down. I don't understand when my, uh, the headwind could have happened. My lady, while she was falling down, as I said, now this arm is totally destroyed was next to her because she couldn't move her this arm voluntarily. Falling down, and I said, hand is coming up. This is a possibility. I'm just putting it as a scenario. I don't say it. this is what happened, but there's a possibility. Hand comes up while falling down. One shot struck her on the finger, hit point point uh, E at the tile, and then while she was still going down, facing the door, another shot hit her, and then a, a, the, the one piece of the core came out and made mark G on the wall. The painstaking debate over detail included the speed at which the rounds were fired. Oscar Pistorius claims the four shots were fired quickly one after the other because he had panicked. But the prosecution contends there was a delay between the first and next three shots, this belief supporting the theory that the runner had fired with deliberate intent to kill. Is your evidence that the accused fired rapidly? I think it was in quite a fast succession session why, like. why, why are you saying that? Uh, for all this to happen because you you can pull the trigger as I, I explained to you lady you must leave the trigger pull it leave it pull it and you must pull the trigger four times uh, and that takes time uh, all depends on the person as I said I've, got, I've been able to do it much quicker when I was younger I can't do it now, and I don't know what the capabilities of the accused is. Maybe you can do it very rapid, but I say it's a possibility that it was fired in quite a, ra a rapid succession. Have you asked him how he fired? No, I didn't. The court was also shown a photograph of a wound on Reva Steenkamp's back. A wound from bullet shrapnel, as suggested by the prosecution. That could prove the model was cowering, head in hand, or a bruise from a magazine rack inflicted as Miss Steenkamp was felled by the bullets, according to the defence. Which portion of the magazine rack would have caused that injury? I'm not sure, my lady. You're not sure? Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, my, my lady, I, one thing I can say, if we, we look at the fragments that it was retrieved from the crime scene, and my, my opinion is based on, 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 on the fragments that was retrieved from the crime scene, and especially underneath the book rack, that is not consistent with the, uh, uh, that type of uh, in, uh, abrasion on her back. The core that you extracted from the toilet, is that the, the core that you... As far as I know, that's one side of the core. There's a close-up of the injury on the back. The striation marks in that whole area where the striation marks are seen is an exact rep replica of your core, the right hand side of your core. Not a, it's not the exact uh, replica, is. my lady. Why? I, I disagree totally. No, I know you want to disagree, but. It's I not that I want to uh, disagree, my lady, I disagree. I can't see the resemblance between something there and. The area you, you showed out here and marked uh, on my photo here. But what we have to take into account is the following. That she had 
a topper. She had a vest. A what? A, a vest. She had a vest. We, 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 we must take it in consideration. Yes. If the, the vest was not pulled up. Yeah. You've seen the book rack, and there are no edges on that book rack. It's a smooth it's a, book rack. The book rack is at the back. And but I've it's seen smooth. It. Am it's, I right? it's, it's, it's a smooth, well working off yeah. book rack. And one needs an edge to, to cause a striation. Am I right? Must be an edge of something. There, some there, 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 there must be something to, to cause a striation. Yeah, that, that, that would be protruding from I, something. I agree. Yeah. I agree. So we can exclude the the magazine rack as the cause of the striation in itself, Co coupled with the uh, shirt, it's possible. I agree. And that you agree. That, that, that <laughs> agree. Next, more evidence from Tom Woolmorans, but under cross-examination, the ballistics expert admits some of his testimony may be speculation. This afternoon, Prosecutor Harry Nell questioned the ammunition used by ballistics expert Tom Woolmorans to conduct his experiments. Your view is it wasn't black talent? It's not black talent because black talent was never manufactured in 127 grain. Is that, so that, well, how did you get to 127 grain? I've measured, uh, I've actually weighed it and uh, a bullet with him and he confirmed it with me that it was 127. A bullet that was pulled by him and bullets that was fired in, uh, in a water trap. Uh, where did you get that bullet from that he fired? When I, investigated, when I went to, to the... From the magazine of the Q's gun? Sorry? Where did that bullet come from? From Captain Mangena. He gave it to me. Now, to Captain Mangena has done some research and you can see, but I don't think it's, a, it's an issue, but I'm, I'm just, just putting it to you, that his research indicated that black talent at 127 grains were manufactured. And it's possible to point that out to you. If you can possible, uh, then, then I, I, I will concede. Then, then yeah, I will yeah. concede. It, it's not, neither you know there, but I, will, I just wanted I will to... Dead, but my information that I gather is that it's not black talent, but if he can show it to me from, for instance, a letter from Winchester, then I'll concede on that point. Do you agree with me that to fire one <laughs> shot at one distance would not give you an accurate disbursement of... I agree with you, uh, my lady, and I also said in my uh, evidence in chief that this is very, very scarce, this with a black, uh, black tip on. I had to actually turn somebody's uh, arm so that uh, you can give me a couple of those rounds, but I could get nowhere. I, if I had more, I would have done more right. tests. Mr. Nell then questioned the material Mr. Woolmorans had used to that test the effect of a bullet after it had passed through the toilet door. You tried to measure splintering of very light particles, splinters. Is that correct? That's what we tried to see. We want to see if there's a, a, a dispersion, what this dispersion is, Molly. But the dispersion that you measured were of splinters in a door. That's good, Molly. Now, why did you not use paper? My lady. A board is, according to me, better to use. No, no, paper, can't. paper will just penetrate it. And exactly. Exactly. Small particles will penetrate paper, but not this board. My lady, paper is not the same as a human skin. What you try to do is to test the disbursement. That's what you just said. Am I yeah, right? that, that, that's but I'm it. saying a paper would have indicated better. Smaller particles would have been indicated on paper better than this board. I put to you that if you used paper, it would have been a better indication because smaller particles would have been more visible on paper. Do you agree with that? I, I, I can't disagree with it. One of the, your major arguments as far as the wound on the right arm is concerned is the Secondary missiles, indications that we can see. That's correct. 
Well, I think uh, let's look at the post mortem report and see what the professor said, what the, no, uh, the, the dispersion was. Look at your photograph. If you look at the photo, there's quite a wide area. Yes. Yeah. That means that the splinters must have spread to, to be able to do this. That's a possibility, yeah? No, what's the other possibility? No, it's a possibility that it's no, already spread. No, what is spread. the other possibility? What is the other... If this is one possibility, what's the other possibility? No, yes. Maybe I've made a wrong word choice, but my, 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 my lady did... What, what, did it, uh, the arm it might have been a little bit further, further away from... Yes. from yeah. So, we have to put the arm further for that wide <coughs> area of secondary missiles. It is then possible, having seen that photograph and having thought about it, that it could have been 55. Correct, my lady. Okay. And I, I also said it's very difficult to, to, to come to a, a, a precise conclusion what her position behind that door was. Another, and I've also cited that another expert may, may come and I have a different opinion from myself and Cap Captain Mangena. We can't really not say what happened. It's all speculation what be happened behind that door. Um, Captain, oh, I almost said Captain. So I, I, I've left the police force yeah, many years ago as a captain. It shows so. that I know you for a while. <laughs> um, Mr. Vormeron, um, <laughs> put myself off, off track, <laughs> Mr. Nell then returned to where Reva Steenkamp was when she was shot. The, the marks on the back of the deceased, we're dealing with that. If that was caused by the magazine rack, she was slowed down. Am I right? I think you're right, yeah. Now, for her to land from that position up to the toilet, she'll have to get up again. I don't quite follow the question Just because she was it. not sitting on the toilet. No, 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 but her head was. I'm talking about her head. For, for her to get from a position where the magazine rack caused the, the mark of the back, for her to get back with her head on top of the toilet, she had to get up. I, I don't know exactly in what position she was found, but... Uh, I was informed, and even the blood on, on, on the magazine, uh, on the toilet, indicates that her head was there and that she was yeah. bleeding there. Yeah. So, but I think she could, could have sat or be on a, a seated position, still with her, her head on the yeah, toilet. But is she seated, seated on the seated, floor? Seated on the floor, yeah. On the floor? Yeah. But if that happened, that then none of the other wind, the bullets would have hit her. If she's sitting on the floor, the bullet holds her too high. My, my lady, my, my, my evidence was that she was falling down while the shot was fired. That brought proceedings to an end. We asked firearms expert Martin Hood and ballistics expert Thunes Brits to assess today's testimony. We've had another day of somewhat dry, perhaps, ballistic evidence. Wally Vormrans has been under cross-examination today. He's given evidence about what he thinks happened inside the, the toilet cubicle. Before we go into the ballistic evidence, I just want to briefly talk about the legal significance of the ballistic evidence because my view is the state hasn't proved premeditated murder. The ballistic evidence becomes important for premeditated murder. However, if they can prove that Reba Steenkamp was alive when the first shot was fired and that she had a means of communicating with Oscar after the first shot so that he knew it was her. Let's talk about that first shot. Tell me what you think of the ballistic evidence. Well, if you, if you look at, at the door and if you listen to the evidence of Captain Mangena, uh, the shot mark A, he said is the first shot and that's the shot that went through the hip. So she wasn't dead? She wasn't dead. She was in, incapacitated, in, in other words, she, she was difficult for her to move. But I, I tend to agree that, that that was the first shot. And if you listen to the other evidence, there was, there was a shot fired, and then s shortly thereafter, a sequence of, of three shots. So she's, she shot, she could shout, scream, 
call his name, say it's me, something like that. Yeah, and that's also where you, uh, Captain McGenna talked of the defensive wound, where she tried to, to defend herself against the bullets coming through the door. So her brain was functioning, so she could have shouted. It's quite possible that she shot. I think that's where, where the ballistic evidence is going to be very, very important in terms of the sequence of the shots. Now, when I think back to Mangena's evidence, I think that he was crisp, lucid, and most importantly, he stood up well under cross-examination, which is critical in a trial like this. Whereas, listening to Balmerans today, I got the impression of a man who was slightly haphazard, perhaps, and I, I, I will talk about that in a moment. But let's talk about techniques as a ballistician how do you test and record your results well I heard in the evidence today he was asked regarding his filing system and it seems to me you don't have a filing system he serves, his, his uh, statement was, was served on file but I mean somewhere there must be notes there must and he be... changed it how did you feel about Romerance's evidence as a whole today um, it seems to me I'm, I'm not sure if rattled is, is the right word it's not, it doesn't come through or over as a, as a confident person that, that everything is in, in order. I mean, he's been in, 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 in ballistics for 40 years. And he's done many cases. Yeah, so I'm not sure if it's a language problem, but it seems to me he's a bit disorganized and he's, he has difficulty explaining to court what he did and why he did it. And how methodically he did yeah. it. Now, to me, that leaves me again with the impression that the version, the, the defense case, does not come across as flowing very well, as as planned very well, and it leaves me feeling that maybe they are just trying to put something together, but they're not getting the pictures yeah. in the right, the puzzle in the right place. How do you how well, do you say about that? The, the idea of, of a of a private uh, ballistic expert is to put doubt over the evidence of Captain Mangena, in this case, the state uh, ballistic expert, and. It, to me, it seems they're struggling at this stage. I mean, so they haven't created that doubt. No, there's no doubt. Mr. Woolmerans continues his evidence next week as the defence case nears its conclusion. Remember, you can watch continuing coverage of the Pistorius trial on Sky News and a special catch-up program at 9:30 every night.